All right, I just finished uh, putting together a battery powered spot welder and I'm trying out the welder to see how well it's working. I did a couple of welds on the other side of this button cell here. It was, I think, a little bit too powerful because I think uh, because of the very thin nickel strip this is like 0.1 millimeter so I think I need a little slightly thicker thicker gauge so I just did a couple of wells so let's try again so I have a momentary switch here Okay, so this seems like a pretty solid well. Uh, on this side here, I held the switch uh, slightly a little too long, and I think on one of the wells on this side, actually blew a hole in the very thin strip here. Okay, so here's the electrodes of the welder. I just have a couple of six gauge wires and this is a 12 volt 18 amp hour seal lead as a battery and actually I just took it out from my Hopper Freight jump starter so I just removed it and use it for testing purposes and this is a 12 volt solenoid, 200 amp. I just put a little LED across the coil terminal. So when I press the momentary switch, it just lights up. And for the connectors, I just use a copper pipe and I just use a hammer to flatten it and drill a couple of holes and then uh, just connect it to this is normally open so we just connect it to one side of the uh, the terminal and then the other side is the positive also so it just goes to the electro connection and then on the left hand side here is the negative the negative just goes to the other electro. So when you're welding, you're basically shorting out your strip and applying a lot of heat so that it would weld the strip to the battery. I don't have a whole bunch of 18650 ready to, to experiment. I probably wouldn't want to experiment too much using these batteries. These are like $5 each. So, right now I'm just testing it on these button cells. Anyway, so when you press the momentary switch, um, you apply current to the coil and the uh, normally open uh, terminals closes and it just pass electricity uh, to your electro. So Basically, that's that's the idea, and I got this uh, const construction uh, from uh, YouTuber Doc Kevin. He made uh, several videos on this, and yeah, I, I thought instead of using a microwave oven transformer, I would try the battery route because. I actually don't do a lot of wells and um uh, seems like a lot of trouble to um go into buying or um using a uh, microwave oven transformer. So um I ordered a timer because this is a little difficult to control if you don't press it long enough the uh, 
uh, coil terminal is not energized. If you press it for, for too long, then it can it can blow a hole in your uh, battery. So that's not what you want. So I ordered one timer with a LED and that was the wrong one because it starts out from one second. And I ordered another one. It's only $1.50 each. That one has a analog um, control. So you can adjust the duration of the well. Uh, you, could, you could actually use a momentary switch but You can do that, you can hear the solenoid clicking when it's energized. But uh, if you want more precise control, then I think the timer is a way to go. As for the wiring, the 6 gauge wire is okay because it doesn't get, it doesn't really, I touch it, it doesn't really get hot. And of course, uh, when it is in operation, I wouldn't touch it. Uh, the metal strips can get hot, your battery can get hot and you have to be careful, wear gloves whenever possible and the coil part I use a 12 volt uh, battery box instead of using the battery because when I get the timer I want the timer to be separately powered rather than using the battery to power because I'm afraid I might short out the electronics in the timer. So that's why I'm using the battery box. This momentary switch, uh, I just use this small one for testing. Uh, it's okay. So when the timer comes, I will try again, uh, see if it gives me better control and a better well. Okay, thanks for watching.